Hello and welcome to Kitten Explains It All. I'm your host, Kitten Summers, and today's show is all about UKIP's immigration agenda. So today's show is about immigration, a touchy subject for most. But is it as bad as UKIP and David Cameron and many in the US make it out to be? In this show, I'm going to concentrate on UK immigration and the UKIP party. But in future, I'm going to do an episode about US immigration. So the question is, what is immigration and how does it actually affect us? Well, immigration is when one person moves from a place made up of grass or sand to another place made up of grass or sand, where they cross an invisible line made up by other people. Now, these invisible lines on the grass or sand are very important. In fact, we must always be aware of them because if you cross over them, you can be arrested or shot or killed um, for just crossing these invisible lines in the sand or grass. So, how does immigration affect us, the people? Well, the facts state it doesn't really. In fact, immigration tends to benefit the country that receives the immigrants. Yes, there are those who would claim otherwise, but they're just misleading you. So, on to a totally different subject now. I would like to introduce you to the UK Independence Party, or UKIP for short. UKIP was founded by Alan Sked, a professor of international history at the London School of Economics. Professor Sked is opposed to Britain being a member of the European Union. He is considered to be an expert of the Habsburg monarchy, an Austro-Hungarian house that was around in the 15th, 16th and 17th century. He was recently quoted as saying... If he was still in charge of the party, the party would have not had its snout in the European uh, Parliament expenses that UKIP Parliament members enjoy to this day. He also said the party had become Frankenstein's monster. UKIP styles itself as libertarian, which means it can join the famous ranks of other great things like the Tea Party in the USA, or Alex Jones, or even Clint Eastwood, or for fuck's sake, Vince Vaughan. The current leader of the UKIP party is Nigel Farage, who is an ex-banker millionaire who has an estimated net worth of about £125 million. It seems that those figures could actually be totally wrong, but Mr Farage is most definitely a millionaire, most definitely an ex-banker, and most definitely part of the 1%. Mr Farage is also under investigation by the EU watchdog for £60,000 that he claimed in expenses from the EU Parliament. So that's a little factual background into the UK Independence Party and Mr Farage, but I'll go more into Mr Farage's background later. So there currently seems to be a concerted effort by the media to put um, immigration into the agenda right now, which of course puts UKIP right in the spotlight. I'm going to make an educated guess here, but... I think there's somebody behind this immigration issue who's forcing it to be front page news. I guess it's about time we talked about Lord Stevens, a former Tory peer who defected from the Tory party in 2012 and became the third UKIP um, member in the House of Lords. He is also the former chairman of the Daily Express newspaper. Mr Farage described him as a giant of Fleet Street Fleet Street being sort of the Wall Street for newspapers. He's also now been given a senior role back in the Daily Express newspaper. But not to worry, our newspapers are impartial and only report on the facts and never in a million years would show any bias towards reporting. Okay, maybe I got this a bit wrong. 
this is about as impartial as asking the cookie monster to do a, a news report on whether cookies are good or bad. Okay, let's forget about Lord Stevens for the moment and let's go back to Mr. Farage, who loves the immigrants so much. He decided to join forces with the Swedish Democrat Party, who were founded in 1998 and whose members wore Nazi uniforms to their party meetings. You can't make this shit up, really, can you? But it gets better. One of the party's founders, Gustav Ekström, had been actual, real, 100% genuine member of the Waffen-SS. No, 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 wait, I'm not making a comparison to these people being like Nazis. These people were actual, real fucking Nazis. I'm not making this up. They are genuine, 100% real Nazis. And it goes on. Nigel Farage actually said, and I quote... I am proud that the UK Independence Party has attracted a third of all BMP party members. But to be fair to Mr Farage, he did go on to say, BMP voters who had switched to the UK Independence Party had been holding their nose over the party's racist agenda. Yes, because Mr Farage and the UK Independent Party aren't racist or xenophobic at all. <laughs> Now, to be fair to Mr Farage, it's not all bad news. I mean, he is of British stock, isn't he? Oh wait, no, he's a third generation German immigrant. Oh, okay. That's right, Mr Farage, his great-grandfather, was the child of German immigrants. So, all that... You know, job stealing immigrants are coming and stealing our jobs and taking them away and blah 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 blah. Turns out you're actually one of them, Mr. Farage, is that right? Yeah. Yes, that's right. Mr. Farage is coming to our country and stealing our jobs. In fact, right now, Mr. Farage is actually stealing Nick Griffin's job. Poor Nick. I think it's time for you to leave, Mr. Farage. It's time for you to stop claiming benefits in this country and go back to Germany where you came from. That's right, I said, send the fucker back. Oh wait, sorry, I'm just joking. I don't really believe in that at all, but that's what he believes in, so... Hey. Hey ho. But in all seriousness, this just highlights how fucked up these people are and how much of a conflict of interest they have. It would be akin to a group of BBC paedophiles being in charge of children's television and the BBC not reporting on it. Oh wait, yeah, that, yeah, we'll leave that there. It really is that fucked up, but it just brings to light how corrupted their mainstream media actually is. You know, all these newspapers, TV channels, news companies, all serve an agenda. And the one thing you can be damn sure of is it isn't in the public or our agenda. We're now seeing the rise of the hatred towards immigrants, which, you know, has become such a huge talking point that even David Cameron has jumped on the fucking bandwagon. The UKIP party has been setting what can only be described as a xenophobic or racist campaign. Yes, it's a huge talking point in Britain right now, but only because we're being force fed it and because ev all the news is filled with it. There's this absolute bio that somehow immigration's this massive problem when clearly it's not. If you constantly bombard people with fear based headlines about any subject for long enough, people will start worrying about it. And this is just another law in the long line of things that the media is hitting us with this fear based thing and playing on those fears and manipulating them, telling us what we should think. So let's talk about the facts of immigration and let's try and talk about the positive things about immigration rather than all of this fear mongering. Nigel Farage has said the volume of labour coming into this market is too much and that means lower wages for millions and millions of people. But this isn't the case. One of the things we can learn here is something called the lump of labour fallacy 
which UKIP bases its immigration beliefs on. Current figures show that immigrants make up 14% of the workforce. So logically, you would think, if we remove 14% of those immigrants from the UK workforce, then you would have an extra 14% jobs for the unemployed, which is what the UK Independence Party is actually stating is the case. The problem is those 14% of immigrant labour actually fill gaps in the market. They complement existing skills and even create new markets within the UK or new products through demands of the actual immigrants themselves. So technically, immigration actually increases employment for native UK workers. This fallacy that UKIP is trying to bombard, scare and bully people into believing is just not true. The second problem is how these things are measured. Immigration and employment are like massive turbulent seas, always shifting and changing and moving with the weather. It's very difficult to measure the impact that immigration has on employment because each part of the UK has different skills, different needs, and depending on things like time of year, you know, the area they are, it might be agriculture, it might be industrial, you know, there's so many different variables, and this econ including economic climate and economic downturn and all the other stuff that we have to deal with, you know, and supply and demand on top of that. The truth is, it's like trying to take the temperature of a Pacific part in the middle of the air, somewhere, you know, 20, 10 miles up or two miles up, and try to hold a thermometer and take the measurement. It's not, it's going to change with the varies of the winds and turbulence and all the other variables that you have to add in. So it's actually extremely difficult to measure these things. The people that UKIP and even the Tories would have you believe that this is totally measurable. But the truth is, it's just not. It's really hard and all you can have is estimations. But we're being led into believing that these people are able to turn lead into gold. And that's exactly what the UKIP party are trying to do. It's just smoke and mirrors. It's a massive media hate campaign on something they don't even fully understand themselves. The one thing that can be made clear here is most independent economic model studies into immigration say that immigration has no statistically significant effect on the overall employment or benefit claims to native United Kingdom people. In some models, there is a small negative effect on employment partially in low paid jobs from immigrants outside of the European Union. It's also important to point out that immigrations are part of the free trade. You know, free to this whole concept of free trade. Well, part of that is the right to move workers and change and everything. That's part of that. So when the UK party says it's against immigration, it's actually against the free market and free trade. And, you know, which is a very, very interesting concept if you actually think about it in some sort of depth. Two factors that you do need to be pointed out is immigrants are actually a net tax benefit. On average, immigrants pay more tax than the average Briton and take less benefits and service on top of that. When you hear UKIP going on about immigrations and, and coming and taking our benefits, what they're actually talking about is working benefits, not unemployed benefits or sickness benefits. In fact, most of the benefits that these immigrants are on are things like working tax credit and child tax credit. You know, we're not talking about job seekers or income support or ESA here. We're talking about people being paid less than the government says it's being fair, is fair, and topping that up. So this whole bullshit that immigrations are coming to this country and sitting on their asses claiming benefits is just simply not true. It's total bullshit made up by the UKIP's xenophobic racist agenda. And it hides behind the fact of that, that face of that fucking smug bastard Nigel Farage. So in closing today's show, don't let those fear-mongering public schoolboy banker millionaires try and scare you off immigration. It's just simply bullshit. They're using their agenda to gain power as they see people are so fucking fed up by corruption. But these banker millionaires are not any different to the Labour millionaires or the Conservative millionaires or the Lib Dem millionaires. They don't give a fuck about the people. In truth, we need to remove the corruption from the UK and, and UKIP is just another one of these corrupt parties. 
who, who will fuck us over as soon as they get into power. It's time that we took that power back and the people of the UK stood up and took that power back and had that to themselves, not these corrupt fucking banker millionaires. Anyway, I'm Kitten Summers and you've been watching Kitten Explains It All. Thanks for watching. If you like what you've seen in today's show, please remember to subscribe to us and remember to like us. Thanks very much for watching.